So we're now going to look at how we can add tabs to our content. Again, I'm in the assets area and in the library item and I'm going to pull out the library called tabs. Place that in the page where I want it to be. I'm going to detach that from the original in order to edit the content. And before I go any further, I'm going to save this and preview in the browser so I can show you what these tabs do. So into the browser now, you can see that we've got a series of tabs here. There's four of them that as we click through the tabs, of course, the content here changes. And an interesting thing is that as we size this down, remembering this has been designed for mobile devices as well, these tabs actually can lapse to become accordion. So on smaller devices, it's still readable and the tabs don't run off the screen. Imagine that this is a phone, for instance. You can still access that content. Then as we scale the browser back up again, they swap over and become tabs again. OK, so with that in mind, let's revert back to Dreamweaver and look at what's happening. So you'll notice that there's this list at the top here, tab 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are the names that are actually going to be displayed on the tab. And then there are a series of boxes, four of them in total, to match the four dot point items in front. So basically they just line up. So this is the first one. OK, so if I save that now and go back into my browser, hit refresh, you'll notice that things have changed in the way that we change them in the content. So it's fairly straightforward. I'll go back into Dreamweaver again. Of course, we can add into each tab whatever normal content we would expect. We can um, place a show hide item in there, for instance. Uh, I'll just drop one of those in the first box. I won't for now bother putting any content in them, just I'll leave them there as placeholders, but you get the idea. In this box, I could put a footnote. No, let me put a pull quote. Here we are. Place that in there. Again, for, for right now, I'm not going to actually bother adding any content to those, but you get the point. Save that. Return to the browser. Refresh. Navigate through. There's my show hide in that first tab. In the second tab, there's a pull quote, etc. So within each of these tabbed areas you can add or remove content in the normal ways you'd expect. The only other thing you might need to do is to adjust the number of tabs, either take tabs away or remove them. I'll start by taking tab away. So recall that we've got four dot points here and four tabs at the moment. Imagine we just wanted three tabs, so I might delete the, the final one of these. And therefore I have to delete the corresponding block of content, the fourth block of content from down here as well. I need to be quite sure that I'm selecting the entire tab and I use this little browser here to do that. So I'm going to choose the div, the divider, that is the wrapper for that tab and I'm going to delete it. Save this, go back, refresh and now you'll notice that there's only three tabs. Imagine that you wanted to go the opposite way. In fact, you didn't want three tabs or four, but perhaps five. So I'm going to do that as well. So it's kind of a reverse of the opposite. I want five tabs, so I have five list items with the names of the various tabs. I'm going to go down. Now I need to add, recall that I've got three tabs at the moment. I'm going to need to add another two. So I'm going to select one of the existing tabs, copy that, paste it, and I'm going to paste it so that now I have one, two, three, four, five. So I've got the right number of tabs. So there we 
and save that. So I've now got five tabs. Let's see, refresh this. That appears to be working. I've got all of my tabs on the top. So you can expand those as you like. And recall again that for someone on a smaller browser, now what they're going to have is these as, as a collapsing uh, accordion style uh, menu, but with the same content.